Okay, right at the end of the last video, uh, this is pretty important to understand. So I'm actually going to go uh, back one step in my history before I made the duplicate. So I realized that from this step to this step, I didn't have his mouth closed, which makes it look like the thing he's eating just disappears. And I want it to look like it's going into his mouth really fast, but I don't want it to make it look like he vanishes. So I realized I need an asset that I don't have. And what I need is this jaw asset that I had for my other guy. I need to add it to this guy. So right now my animation works perfectly, except that I turned on the jaw just for that frame because I had that jaw already designed. But watch what, so if I play, you know, through the rest of the animation up to that point, you'll notice there's no like floating jaw anywhere. But if I go to that point, frame 25, and I have the jaw turned on, and then I duplicate it because I need to make a new layer to make that jaw work for the guy in the background. If I duplicate it, Command J, now when I play the animation, that new layer, that duplicate, let's see. Oh, good. It's not going to show up in all of them. Good. Okay. So I made the duplicate, and luckily, so far, that duplicate is only showing up in this one frame. And that's because I've stayed only on this frame as I turned it on. But this is what's tricky. Because I made it as a duplicate, it's set in that position. So I need to transform it and flip it. And then push it into the background and tilt it so that it works for my guy in the background. I can warp it. And it's good. It gives me a little, little more to use. So I'm just going to move that jaw. This is a copy. So I'm going to make it a new color. This is for a different character. Move that down through the layers. There we go, until it's in the background. And then I can turn the other jaw off. Right. So it goes from this. Ah, but you see, now that jaw that I duplicated is in every frame. See that jaw there? So that's the problem with adding assets in, is they'll turn on every frame that you've outputted. Now it's not, as long as you understand why that happened, <laughs> you can control it. It's just a bit of a pain. So what I do is I go to the frame where I want that jaw in there, and I can even kind of keep working with that jaw. For instance, I need to sharpen it a little bit. So on that frame, I'm gonna take that jaw, that layer, and I'm going to say sharpen, uh, unsharp mask, just a little. It's already behind a lot of atmosphere. See how that looks. Hmm, I can't tell a difference. Let's try Smart Sharpen. That's a little bit more hands-on. Yes, that should work. Good, that helps. All right, so I've got the jaw there but I need it turned off in all the other layers. So what do I do? I click the layer uh, right before the layer where I want it turned on. I select it and then I hold down shift and go all the way back to my first frame. I'm saying layers, but I, should, I mean frames. And then all those frames are selected, right? Just like we were gonna select the timing for them. We can program multiple frames at once. So what I'm going to do is for that, just turn off that jaw and often I'll turn it off turn it on again and turn it off just to make sure I know what I'm changing right because it could be disastrous at this point if I accidentally like turn off some layer across all of my outputted frames and wasn't sure what I was doing okay so now that should give me the result and all of that was just to add a new layer once I already had frames outputted
Yeah, but sure enough, that works. Okay. But notice I need to play with this frame a little bit more. I basically need to set it to reset. And I need to play with the atmosphere just a little bit. And I need to roll back the blues. Let's see, is there anything else? No, okay. So now I go to the next frame and I need this creature to start sinking down. Now this is tough because I want his jaw, well, we'll see. Maybe I don't need his jaw to actually sink down with him. So I'm gonna have it open, but I'm also gonna move my character so he's there. Yeah, it's gonna be okay if we don't see his jaw again. And I'm gonna change this timing to 0.3, because he's back to moving slowly. This timing to 0.3. Okay, very good. And now I have to set the environment. Don't need any of this stuff anymore. So it's just good to simplify as I go. Don't need the tongue group anymore. But I do need his movement. I can roll these back another two. I can even play with this gradation, gradation a little bit. Okay, good. Okay, the next frame. Go from the bottom up. He sinks down a little bit more. He's nestling into place. And from the top down. Roll back the blue, play with these. Push that up a little. Push this back a little. Push this up a little. So. Change the atmosphere a little bit more. Because now it's going a little slower and it's not as not as action-packed. Right? And then the next frame, he settles back into his original position. The blue rolls back. Atmosphere changes slightly. Good. So now, basically, I have my full animation. I've done my whole storyboard. Right. But there's a difference. There's a difference between my last frame and my first frame. And that's that this creature is here in the first frame. Right. So how can I set the animation to reset? Well, I need to get this character to kind of come back in. So, so all that's pretty straightforward. And is it a transformation? It's definitely a transformation for the bug, right? But it's also a transformation of the landscape. These things revealing themselves to not just be parts of the landscape. Now, what if I wanted an easier set to reset? Well, I would save my work here. My file is already very large. <laughs> it 
it's 1.3 gigabytes right now. So that's why it's so important for it to just be eight inches by 150 pixels per inch. So otherwise it would be, you know, four times that amount. And just wouldn't run well at all. Okay, but how do I connect this last frame with this first frame? One method is what's called an in-between. And I know our digital honor student uh, presented this to you. You can do between frames. You can have the computer um, make them for you as long as there's not like tricky little animation steps you want. It's basically a cross fade. So what I do is I click on the last frame, which looks pretty different in its colors, right, than the first frame. And I hold down um, command, not shift, and I also click on the first frame. So now I have the, the last frame and the first frame selected. Then I don't use the new frame icon within the timeline window. I use the tween animation icon, which is right next to it. And if I click on that, I'm going to add five frames, but you can choose how many you want to try. Um, that crossfade all the layers that are attached to those frames, which are a lot, in position, opacity, and effects, even though I don't have any effects on them. So I hit OK, and now watch what happens. It creates these five frames for me, which will slowly fade in <laughs> that, that character. It's like he'll be a transporter beamed in. So let's look at how that ends now. And then it starts again. So it's a bit of a cheat. but it can work. Now I think maybe I do want that, but I, I don't want it to happen so quickly. I basically just want to have a moment of calm. where we can play with the atmosphere a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I am going to extend these frames even more. And so it will seem even uh, less obvious how the creature is appearing. And I'm going to do that with these blues rolling in and out. And so I'm going to duplicate that frame, play with it and play with the atmosphere more frame to frame. So there's just little changes happening. In the sky and everywhere else. And this is just fussing over the details of each frame after the fact. But it will make it look like the wind's kind of sweeping across it. The other thing I can do to set to reset is play everything backward, <laughs> which won't really work for mine. I saw a nice uh, GIF animation of firefighters being the, the most evil creatures on the planet. And what it was was firefighters putting kids back into burning buildings over and over. <laughs> so it's easy to reverse frames of an animation, right? And sometimes that works really great. Play it forward, then play it backwards, play it forward again. So I'll show you how you can do that. Depending on what you need. So you see, by building in those few extra frames, it sets to reset a little less obviously. Because there's more changing than just the creature appearing. <laughs> I think I want to extend them even a little further, so 